So we're, you know, getting closer to I the fight. I saw you yesterday, I know. dude. <laughs> <laughs> what's your, what's your uh, mind like and, and where are you in the process of, you know, cutting weight and, and actually getting ready for, for Saturday? Um, in every fight, there's always like a three months before, two months before, one month before, and so on, two weeks, one week, couple of days, day before fight, whatever. And everything's going as planned, you know, everything's as usual, you know, there's ups and downs throughout the camp and throughout the week and throughout doing all this stuff, you know. This stuff takes a lot of the energy because you get all these little all day long. So I wish I didn't have to do this, but on, the, on another note, it is what it is and you guys need to promote. So, but besides that, everything's good. Are you talking about a big fan of like that side of the sport, like kind of the entertainment aspect of it? Like, would you, if it was up to you, would you prefer to just you know train, show up, fight, not talk to any of us or any of that kind of stuff? I understand the promotional side of it that, that you guys need to make uh, sell the fight. Um, but as a fighter, I don't feel like uh, I need to do anything like. I don't need to constantly promote myself and constantly um, bring attention to myself because ultimately, especially before the fight, there's nothing to say except until the fight. After the fight, then there's like, okay, what happened? How do you, stuff to talk about? But ultimately for me, I don't really do interviews before my fight until fight week because there's nothing to say. Like, what is there to say? You guys know my history. You guys know what I'm uh, generally about. Uh, I train like a psycho every time I do that. Uh, every time I fight, I, t I always bring everything to it. So there's nothing really to say, you know? Maybe something about the opponent, but that's like the one question. Um, it really doesn't really matter for me. I don't think it matters as much for me, like, what I think. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters how I fight. And then after that, then there's something to talk about. But I don't think that there's such an importance. For me personally, you know, I, I'm already like, you know, my dad was a fighter, my grandfather was a fighter. It, was all, it comes from a, from a different um, situation than a lot of fighters. A lot of fighters, they need to separate themselves and they need to show that they're somebody and they need to kind of make themselves available and Di uh, different and some people naturally have a character you know and some people are naturally know how to talk and some people are naturally certain types of people but those are few and then the rest are just kind of trying to find their place you know they don't know how to be and how their character should act so they're like what character am I going to play you know your opponent Krub Swanson um well known to get into wars, you know, puts the smile on when he gets to that point in the fight. Um, are you maybe expecting that? Are you prepared for you know, possibly go, going into a war with him like that? Yeah, for sure. I'm expecting a war. We, we asked him uh, which gyms uh, he didn't get into. He said he didn't want to name drop because he potentially wants to go train there after the fact. So I don't know if he'll be able to send him shirts. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but he did say he's, he'd be down to talk to you after the fight and, and then maybe tell you personally. So. Sure, let's yeah. fight first. So, and you just talked about sort of the stages, right? Like three months out from the fight, this and that. Um, would you say this, you know, fight week and having to do like all the media and, and stuff, is, is that probably the least enjoyable for you? I think it takes a lot of energy, you know, answering questions, uh, the same questions, you know, and, and like, it's not just the, the, you guys, you know, it's like they have me doing calls all day long and doing this stuff. So throughout a day, I'm spending most of my day doing calls and interviews and stuff like that. So it takes a lot of energy, you know? It takes a lot of energy. Normally in a day, I don't have to do that. I train and yeah, the whole day is planned around um, how I'm gonna get better. And then doing a whole day of media, it takes a little bit away from it. But again, like I, I understand that it's a... <laughs> More media. I understand that... <laughs> That's not media, for sure, <laughs> calling my phone. <laughs> Hope not. Uh, I understand that there's a promotional side to it, and they got to sell the fight. I understand that. 
that's cool. But that's their job. Yeah. You know, not my job. Um, and I, I could do what I can do, and I, and I feel uh, honored to even be uh, wanted and to talk about my training, talk about my fight and my life and my family and the things that make me who I am today. But there's a certain, like, amount and a pre amount, like, okay, you know, give me a break, you know. Yeah. We've been doing this for three days. I've been doing media every day I got here. So I'm grateful that this is the last media, and then I get to talk to ESPN, and yeah. then I'm done until the fight. Is this something you weren't uh, exposed to as much when you were fighting for other promotions, no. like in Japan? <clears throat> I mean, as a, as a jiu-jitsu, of course, it's more, for sure. Um, but coming in from jiu-jitsu, I was always the center of attention, you know? Like, I had 15, when I was 15, I had articles written on me because of my jiu-jitsu. Media always trying to ask me questions about jiu-jitsu. And when you're younger, of course, you want to be kind of like doing that kind of stuff. And you have so much more energy, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I got energy. I could do anything. And uh, it, it was all good. And the media was never really like something I was like, um, I was never like, oh, man, I got to do media. I was like, okay, fuck, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting to beat people. I'm getting to different places. I'm doing these things I've never done before, but at this point, energy conserving, yeah, conserving my energy the maximum, because it's a big night on Saturday, is my, my biggest goal, yeah. you know, it's my biggest objective, it's like, okay, conserve my energy as much as possible, You're, uh, I'm sorry. because Saturday is going to be a big night. And, and I know well, that's one for me. And I know that um, you're also like very low key with uh, social media. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you take the same approach when it comes to social media, like staying away from it because you feel like it might take some energy from you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I don't have much to say. Like, like I train all day. I have friends. I have a family. Um, you know, I chill. I do things but it's not like I got much to say and like um, I post when I feel like it's necessary and like sometimes here and there but I've always kind of been kind of a, a to myself person in, to the public and to, it, to, my, to, to my friends too I'm kind of low key I try to be at least um, but I do I do give the fans what I feel like I can give them and I think that if I like, if I constantly post, think about this, okay, you post a photo one day. Okay, what photo am I gonna post? And you think about it, hmm. And you sit there and you're, and you're like, okay, if I finally pick, pick, a pick the photo, post the photo. And then you're like, okay, fuck, oh, who likes this photo? And who, what do these people say? You think about it, that's a lot of energy. That's like hours of going into that. And then you do that again, you do it two times a day, you do that three times, fuck. <laughs> That's a lot of energy. That's your whole day. People who are constantly on the uh, social media posting and, and being active that much, unless they're just like, I don't give a fuck, and then let, it, let the internet take it, that's the only way to do it, is if you're just like, okay, this is what I'm doing, Poof. then let the internet take it. But if you're like really thinking about what you're going to post and post it, that's a job. People hire people to do that for them. You know, people hire full-time companies, people to do that for them because it's a full-time job. I personally, for me, I mean, anybody can do whatever they want. You guys all have your own lives to make your own decisions. But for me personally, I'm trying to do this fight. I'm trying to train. I'm trying to take this seriously. For sure, after the fight, I'll be more active on social media because I'm not putting all my energy into training. After the fight, you might see me post something, you know, more often, more casual because I got more energy and more time to do such. But when I'm training for a fight, <laughs> I don't care. Are you going to be in uh, New York next month, May? I should be, but you know we got to get through Saturday first. Yeah. Um, how? I mean, I don't know if proud is the right word, but just like happy are you to see him getting, you know, this type of shine, this type of opportunity in a main event, Madison Square Garden. Um, I think it's beautiful. I think, uh, you know, Nate's finally getting the the what he wanted. You know, the the recognition that he deserves and. Um, he basically took that, you know. He didn't ask nobody for no favors, and no one gave him. No one was giving him no, no 
know, time of day at a certain point, and he basically took that into his own hand, his power of his mind and his training and all his fights and everything. And he was like, no, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go do, take what's mine, and he did. So that's all thanks to him and his uh, spirit. And he created this belt out of thin air, and now it's like a belt. And I saw it on ESPN, and it was like Masvidal is fighting for the BMF belt on ESPN, it was like a little thing, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> they put it on ESPN, they're fighting for a belt? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this guy's amazing. So, I mean, obviously it goes to show, we, we don't need, I don't need to say how, um, I don't need to say how, how impressive that is and how much of a star he is. And uh, I knew that from the beginning. I knew what he was and how, how powerful him and his brother are. That's why I went to go train with them. I was looking at all the fighters when I was trying to look for a fight and when I was getting into fighting. And I was like, hmm, there's a bunch of teams next to my gym, next to LA, all these places. And I was like, where am I going to go train for a fight? Who am I going to want to train with? And I was like, fuck, Nick and Nate. I was like, these guys are it. You know, this is where I want to learn and who, what team I want to be with. So I made the decision, and coincidentally, right around the same time, Nick and Caesar had asked me to come help him for George St. Pierre the first time before they fought, before it got canceled. And uh, so we already had like a connection there, and then, then I came, long story short, I was like, this is my team. So I d drove for years, I drove, still drive, six hours to go train with them, come back, spend two weeks there, come back, spend two weeks in LA, go back and forth six hours, you know, just to just to have training partners, just to just to make them my team, just to have that kind of uh, environment around me and that kind of team. So I made my team. I went and drove six hours to make, to be part of that team. And then after they started coming down, started helping me train, started becoming a bigger part of my gym. And um, there's never, and enough amount of time to be around them. You know, we always want more time with Nick, we always want more time with Nate, and we can get we get what we can. Do you think Nick ever fights again? You gotta ask Nick. Uh, can you just speak on what it means to you and, and your family to, you know, be the first real Bracey in a while to be in the limelight in the UFC, you know, having the roots that you guys do in the UFC, um, to, you know, does that put a little bit of extra pressure on you to bring bring that home for them? Yeah, but it, for me personally, this has all just been happening since I was a little kid. I think I have a little different of a pressure because my dad specifically never lost a fight, and his dad is the one who created jiu-jitsu. So different than any other Gracie, there's been an extra spotlight on me, maybe like one of those uh, surefires, the right ones. And then uh, just in general, when you're a Gracie, you have this pressure to, to be successful and to be great. But for me, since I could ever remember, you know, like a little, little kid going into a jiu-jitsu tournament, everyone's like, oh, fuck, this, this is Higgs and son. And then the whole stadium stops. 500 people stops to watch a little nine-year-old kid compete. So that's always been my situation. Uh, now you guys are just seeing, like, oh, fuck, this kid came out of nowhere and he's... Now he's fighting for the UFC, but that's you guys just didn't know me back before. But anybody from jiu-jitsu, anybody who saw me compete as a kid, anybody who saw, they all knew, uh, they all know what's going on from the beginning. Your father, as you mentioned, uh, undefeated in mixed martial arts and a big legend, uh, Hickson. Can undefeated in, uh, in jiu-jitsu and in mixed martial arts. Can you offer us or share any advice that maybe he's given you um, as you're getting into you know, the, the big limelight that you're in? Yeah, he, he made me who I am, really. He gave me the foundation and the roots to become a champion and to become a good man and to do, he's everything, you know? Every, my whole childhood, my whole jiu-jitsu career, he's always been my, my um, He's found, he, he created me, you know, he created a monster.